Hey guys, DJ here, and this is going to be the first part of Underwater Scenes in Blender. This is going to be a super awesome series, and I'm looking forward to showing you guys how to make these cool scenes. Here is an example of something that I made. Uh, obviously, this is going to be a little bit more in-depth than the thing that I'm going to show you how to make, but there's some really cool things that you can do, provided you have the right place to start from. If you haven't yet, please like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps me out. We also have a very active Discord community. So if you want to join that, the link is down below in the video description. And if you want to be awesome like the people down below, you can become one of my patrons, get some project downloads, and all kinds of cool stuff. So check out the link also down below in the video description. Okay, so this time what we're going to do is we're actually going to, or I'm going to show you what kind of the end result's going to be. So we're going to have a scene that's kind of like this. We will be using LuxCore. Like I said in the beginning of this video, we're going to be using LuxCore for this. And, um, well, because it's the best uh, to use for this and the easiest. So what you see here is kind of the scene we're going to make. We have some ruins over here on the right and on the left. We also have this text right here. And if I sort of go over here and show you what it looks like just by itself, this is the text that we created for the epic text tutorial series. So this might look familiar to you guys. I use it in the, you know, intros and stuff like that. So if you haven't made anything like this, you can check out that tutorial series. It's pretty cool and it kind of looks neat in this little scene that we made here. And we're going to be making some um, pretty neat uh, materials with volumetrics and stuff like that. Um, along with, uh, let's just jump out of here real quick, a sort of simulation here for some waves and we'll also create this sort of like uh, displaced sandy sort of area underneath the waves here. And after we do everything, including uh, set up all our lighting and everything like that, what we end up with is something that looks kind of like this. So you can see here, uh, it just started to do the viewport render and we have a pretty cool looking scene with some really neat uh, caustic effects that go through here and some light rays that come down and some neat sort of like lit up areas in the background and stuff like this. Now yours might look a little bit different um, and it should. And this isn't really about, you know, really materials or anything like that. I just wanna show you guys sort of the basics on how to set up a rough scene that you could start to block things in. And you can just take a look at this project that I'll put up on the screen right here. This is a personal project I did for somebody as a present, it's sort of like a, uh, painted, um, you know, look of an underwater scene that uh, this person really likes mermaids and stuff like that. So I created like some schools of fish and stuff like that and some mermaid tails and things all throughout the scene and this large, uh, really cool um, uh, sculpture of a mermaid that I found that you can also get from uh, kind of the same website that I'll be linking below for the, uh, for the columns and stuff like that. Okay, so now we just have a default scene here, so you can uh, open that up. And we're gonna be using LuxCore for this, uh, like I mentioned in the beginning, the intro of this video. So uh, make sure you have that downloaded and installed. You can check out this tutorial series uh, that I have on the engine if you are a little bit confused or you're not really sure what's going on, you can check that out. I'm not gonna be going completely slow on this one when it comes to some of the basics of the engine. This is more for people who kind of know the engine, but you can always rewind it and you know check it out again if you need to. So let's go ahead and take this light here and we're gonna delete that. And you can see on the bottom left, I have the screencast keys. It's a little different. So you got a little mouse there, left le uh, left mouse button presses and uh, the key presses and stuff like that. So you should be able to, to um, check that out. If you get lost or anything, you can check it out down there. So let's take a look here. We wanna actually keep this cube, but we got rid of that light. I'm gonna hit N and we're going to look at the dimensions of this. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up kind of like the dimensions of our box, our world that we're gonna build in here. And it's gonna make it a little bit easier to do some stuff in a minute. So let's take the dimensions here. And what we want is something like 10 meters deep. And then we want 30 on these two here. So 30 meters, by 30 meters and then 10 meters on the depth of it. Okay, so we got this sort of like box here. And if we go into edit mode by hitting tab here and go to face select by hitting three or selecting it up here, we can actually, what we wanna do is take the bottom and the top here, select those, hit X, delete the faces. Then I'm gonna hold alt, left click select and that's gonna grab all this stuff. I'm gonna hit E and then right click and then we're gonna hit alt S and hold shift and then we can scale it out like this. This is a little bit of a hard surface modeling tip for you guys if you don't if you didn't know you could do that. It's really cool. 
And basically we just have this little box here. And what we want to do also is we just want to check to make sure that our normals are uh, pointed in the right direction. We don't want it to be interior or something like that. That might have happened to you. So if you hit A and you go up here to Mesh and then go down to Normals, Recalculate Outside, you should have uh, fixed whatever issues there might have been with that, okay, in case those were flipped. So this is kind of our box, and it's going to kind of get in our way if we keep it in the solid mode. So let's go over here, make sure that you have the object properties open, and go down to, to the viewport display, and then down here where it says display as textured, change that to wireframe. So now basically we can see what's inside of the object and not have to worry about this thing in our way. So I'm going to hit tab there, go back into object mode, and now we have this. In solid mode it just looks like a outline. Pretty cool. Then what we're going to do here is we're just going to start to create our waves because that's the thing that really is going to be the determining factor of how the uh, overall lighting effect is going to happen with those caustics that hit the floor. So <clears throat> there's a couple ways to do this and I'll, and I'll explain it um, in a minute some, some different ways. But I'm just going to show you the way that I think is the best and makes the most sense for me. So if we go over here. I'm going to hit N to hide this and T to hide this. I'm just going to zoom in a little bit. Go over to our modifiers here. Add modifier. And then go over to ocean. And it's going to create this really big uh, sort of like plane here. And if we hit tab to go into edit mode, you can see that it's just the little uh, face right here. Just this little plane that we made. But if we go back into object mode, you can see that it got a lot bigger. Okay, so that's fine. I'm going to show you what we're going to do with this thing to make it look really, really cool. So what we want to do is we really want to increase the resolution. And we're going to do it on the viewport first, but you'll see the reason why uh, we're going to do this in just a second. So if we take a look at this up close, and depending on your hardware, this might be a problem for you, but I'll just show you what this looks like. If we just keep hitting to the right, if we click the right arrow here, the more we do that, you can see there's more sort of like ripple effects that are on the surface. And there's basically more detail that we're seeing right on that surface there. So we'll want to keep this pretty high eventually, but let's knock this down a little bit. And we're going to alter a couple things here to make this a little bit more dynamic. So we're going to do with the depth here because we know it's about 10 meters. We're just going to put a 10 in here. And it's not going to have a whole lot of a, uh, of a difference um, when it's at 10 or above 10. But if we make this go down to, let's say, 0, you can see that it sort of changes the shape overall. And this is basically like how deep is the like ground from the ocean here. So we're just going to keep that at 10 because we know that this overall box is 10 and it shouldn't matter too much. The next thing here is this thing called the spatial size. So if you look at this and you kind of hover over these, these things, it kind of helps you. So it says size of simulation domain in meters. So we know that 30 is the size of the box here. But you can see that if we do that, it kind of doesn't go all the way through because of the displacement that's happening here. So let's go to a 32 or something like that. So ju it just bleeds over. If I hit 7, you can see that now it's sort of like inside that box and we won't have to worry about any issues. And you'll understand why we're doing this in a couple minutes. So just be a little bit patient. I'm going to try and get through this in as short a time as possible because I know my videos are usually long. So we're going to try and get this done quickly. So the next thing here is this wave section. If we look underneath there, there's a lot of other things that we can do here. We're going to ignore this wind velocity, and we're just going to hold shift and right click and increase the scale on the choppiness here. And you can see that as we move this, it makes things a little bit more sort of like uh, peaked, like there's more of these peaks in the waves. You got to be careful because sometimes you can see folds in the mesh. So if we look at the choppiness there, you can see that it's starting to fold in on itself. So you want to be a little bit careful when you start to do this, okay? So we just want to increase the, the choppiness a little bit there. And then what you can do is you can take the scale here if you want, and you can increase that. But you got to be careful again. You can see that it's starting to sort of wrap up on itself, and you might need to take that choppiness and fix that again. But you can increase the scaling of your waves by shifting this here and adjusting the choppiness of your waves. You can also look at the smallest wave here, hold shift and uh, left click and drag, and you can see that you're changing the overall size of basically whatever the smallest wave pattern 
in the displacement is. Now, because we're making an underwater scene, we actually want the smallest wave to be pretty small because when the light goes through this, we want it to have these really cool caustic refraction effects that will take the these sort of like ripples in the water and then cast really cool looking um, light patterns on the on the ground and on the uh, surface of any object underneath it, okay? So let's keep the smallest wave at a pretty low amount and you can increase the scale as much as you want. Um, just be careful again for the choppiness here. You might need to adjust this as you do that. So then uh, let's go ahead and take this resolution viewport and I'm just gonna type in a 20. And you can see that when I did that, there's all of these ripples that showed up here. And if we change change this value to like a 30, you can see that there's even more, okay? Now you can recreate this with uh, a bump map later when we start doing materials. Just remember that I'm telling you that you can use a bump map with some uh, Voronoi or noise textures or something for the same effect. But I really think that this is the best way to do it because you can really see on the surface how uh, those waves are. So when the light gets cast through it, it's a little bit more clear what the surface is doing. And sometimes LuxCore is not the easiest when it comes to viewing some of your materials, especially when we start adding uh, volumes and stuff. So just be aware of that. Now we're just going to keep this the way that it is here. We're not really going to change this spectrum section or anything else. And we're not doing an animation, so we're not going to bake this. But this is basically going to be what the uh, water effect is going to be projecting below. Now we're not going to have the under area of the water visible in our scene. Uh, that I might cover on a different um, tutorial because you have to do some different stuff to like make that work properly. But I'm just going to grab this on the Z. We're going to move it up here and we're just going to leave it as it's playing on the top of this box here. Okay. Let's go ahead at this point and save our file. So let's save this and I'm just gonna call this LC Water um, Tutorial uh, 1. Save that. Make sure you save often and save different iterations too as you build this because sometimes there might be some issues. So we have our water up here. We have our box that it's contained in. Now we need a floor. So let's hit Shift A, add a ground plane and let's go ahead and scale this up. Control A to apply the scale and let's grab this on the Z and just move it down a little bit. And what we wanna do here is we're gonna to want to create a displacement map that kind of creates like a sort of like sandy or under underwater um, like sandy area. And this could be rocks, this could be a whole bunch of stuff, but we're just gonna make this very simple. Um, we're going to first go into edit mode, right click and subdivide our object. So if we go over here, sorry that this is in the way right here, but you can see the number of cuts here. Let's just change this to 100, and that's going to make it a little bit easier. So um, when we add our displacement map, it's going to be a little bit easier to deal with this. Now, based on your computer hardware, some of this might take a little bit of time when you start to add some subdivisions. So you might want to take this, your ocean here, and just while we're here, see where it says resolution viewport is 30 and the render is 7? Make sure you change this render to the right amount because when you actually end up rendering and your viewport is at 30 but this is at 7, you're going to notice that there's quite a bit of a difference with the light patterns that are being cast onto the uh, ground. So just make sure that you set that. But for right now, just to help us out with our um, computer speed, let's just change this to 10 at the moment just so that we have it there and uh, it doesn't take too much of our computing power. So let's go to the ground plane here and we're going to add a displacement. So right here, there's a displacement modifier. We're just going to project a procedural texture onto here. So if we go up here and we click new, we can actually name this texture. So let's call this sand. And this little thing that looks like, it looks like pills to me. You can either go here to the texture or just click this little button here. And let's actually, before we do that, where it says coordinates, let's change this to global and leave that at normal. And we'll just leave this right now and then click on this right here. And it's just going to show up right here and you can use an image or whatever, but we're just going to use a procedural uh, texture here. And what we're going to use is a Musgrave. And I'm using some of these values from what I worked on previously, but I'll kind of walk you through this. So 
basically these are all a bunch of different types of procedural textures and you can control the size of these for whatever you want your displacement to be. And the displacement is going to be based on how many subdivisions the actual object is in your geometry, but you can also throw some subdivision surface modifiers in here. But for now, we're just going to leave it as this, um, as what it is right now with the 100 subdivisions that we put in there, just to keep it easy. So we're just going to click this Musgrave pattern here. And then right here, it says noise basis. We're going to keep that as Blender original, but the type, we're going to change this to FBM. Okay. So it's going to have this sort of pattern here. And we can change the size if I hold shift and I left click and drag, you can see that the size of that texture is changing and we have these sort of peaks and valleys down in here. And all of these settings will actually change just like you would if you were making a, a, a map for an, an object uh, for materials or something. This is basically the same idea except for you're creating a displacement map for this. And basically what we're gonna do here to save some time, just type in these values. We're gonna do a 0.95 for the dimension the uh, lucanarity here, six. And for the octaves, we're gonna do a 3.63. And we are gonna take the size here and change it to a 0.56. Now let's go back to our modifier here and let's actually change this from uh, global to local. We're just gonna do that, okay? And let's take the strength and we're just gonna pull this around a little bit and see what we wanna do here. So there's pretty high there. And let's actually go back and let's change the size a little bit. So if we change the size, let's uh, pop it up to a two. You can see that we're getting a little bit more space here because you can see that if we had the smaller value, you can see how close these are together. But if we have a bigger value like two, or we can type in a five or something like that, you can see that now we're getting some nice little areas that don't have as much of that, um, these bumps in the way. So we can actually put something right in here. So let's go then back to our modifier properties and we can change the strength here. Just make a little bit more like peak and valley-ish. And we can right click, shade smooth, and now we have something kind of like this. And we can grab this on the Z and move this up a little bit. That's kind of cool. So what we can also do here is uh, what tends to make this look a little bit nicer so it's not as low resolution as this. Let's just save our file we're going to actually press control two, which is going to subdivide the surface, but take this, click this part right here, and we're gonna put it above the displacement. And if you do that, you can see that now it's making a little bit more detail in our object. We have, if we turn this on and off by clicking this button here, you can see that we're adding detail to this texture. And if you click up on here, you can add more or less depending on the amount of subdivisions and make sure that your render is gonna be the same if you end up doing this. So it looks kind of like a neat little underground sort of like valleys and peaks that were created by, I don't know, like rock and water going over it or something like that. And you can always change or adjust your uh, displacement map here by going here, changing the size if you'd like. Um, you know, you could change that to a two or something, and then you end up with something like this, which is probably not ideal. But you can always play around with this. Just remember that this is going to be a little bit of an issue if you start playing around with it and you have a slower computer. So you might want to either turn this subdivision off while you're doing that um, or just change it to you know something like a two while you're previewing the changes in your texture. The last thing that you're kind of you're going to kind of want to do here is sort of like soften all of these harsh edges that you see here. And you can do this by just hitting control one one more time. Oops, actually that just uh, changed this one here. Let's just go to the modifier, add a subdivision surface here, and just make sure it's at the bottom of your list. You can change this to a one at this point. And if we just turn this on and off, you can see that it just kind of softens all of these edges here. And you can turn it up to a two maybe uh, for your render, or maybe even a three for your final render. So it'll take a little bit more time to build at the end, but. Um, you'll get a nice little smooth surface when you do your final render. So that's basically how you create the floor, and it looks pretty cool. All right, that's going to be it for this part. Join me next time when we go more into how to actually make this thing look super awesome. Again, if you haven't, please like and subscribe to the channel. It's really great if you do that. It helps out the channel tremendously, and it's very easy to do. 
And make sure you subscribe so that you know when the next video has been released. And I will see you next time on DJ Tutorials.